In 2013, my mom bought me a toothbrush for Christmas, an electric toothbrush. It was an Oral-B Pro 1000. The cross-action brush head was designed to surround each tooth while its bristles oscillate, pulsate, and rotate to break up and remove 300% more plaque along the gum line than your regular manual toothbrush. I took one look at that toothbrush after thanking my mother, of course. I took one look at that toothbrush. The toothbrush, it looked back at me, and in that moment, I decided that I was going to quit my job. <laughs> to me, that plug-in toothbrush, it didn't represent oral health, clean teeth, polished jibs, pearly whites. Looking at that box, examining that device, I saw stability, I saw safety, and I saw routine. I saw my own life inside that box, a life inside my comfort zone, a life plugged in to one location. And at the time, I wanted none of it. See, I loved my manual toothbrush. It was blue, it had sensitive, it had nice soft bristles for my sensitive gums, it had little bumps on the back for extra grip, but most importantly, it was small, it was portable, and I could just throw it in my suitcase and go. Not a worry in the world. If I lost it, it could be easily replaced. My manual toothbrush, it represented travel and adventure, risk and reward. It represented a life on the road outside of my comfort zone, and that was the life that I craved. At the time, in 2013, I was working a job that I enjoyed. I worked with some amazing people, I made decent money, I had benefits, and I was in my hometown, so I was able to live for super cheap, thanks to uh, my parents in their basement. <laughs> but the job that I had wasn't something that I wanted to do forever. Sure, if I toughed it out for a few years, I probably would have grown into it, and I would have climbed the company ladder, did that whole thing. But for something that was going to take up eight hours of my day, five days a week for the next 40 years of my life, I didn't want to have to grow into it. I wanted to love it. And I get that not everyone can have a job that they absolutely love. I get that. But for me, at that time, I hadn't even given myself a chance to pursue something that I was passionate about. Because to be completely honest with you guys, I didn't know what it was that I was passionate about. I had no idea what I wanted to do for the next 40 years, and that scared me. Not knowing is scary. Leaving your job without a plan B is scary, and probably not the smartest idea. It took me four months to muster up the courage to quit my permanent job, pack my bags, and move away. But in that four months before moving away, something happened. I, uh, I fell in love. I fell in love with that electric toothbrush. <laughs> now, metaphors aside for a second, I didn't fall in love with the life that the electric toothbrush represented. I just fell in love with using that. It was way better than a manual toothbrush. <laughs> it had a timer. You knew how long you were brushing for. It had five different speed settings, one of them designed specifically for people with sensitive gums, remember? It also had this weird pulse setting. I don't know who's using that or what it's for. I'm sure it's good for something. Anyways, my teeth had never been cleaner. But I had to say goodbye. I had to pack my bags, move away, and leave that toothbrush and what it represented behind. I had to unplug for a little while. Unplug from my comforts, unplug from my routines, unplug from my stability, and dive headfirst into the unknown in hopes that a change in scenery and some new adventures with my manual toothbrush would help me discover something about myself that I hadn't figured out just yet. I went to Vancouver, British Columbia. I didn't go anywhere crazy. It wasn't, the big, it wasn't a crazy, drastic move. I moved to Vancouver, and uh, that's where I tried to start this new adventure. I, uh, when I got there, instead of pursuing a marketing job, which is what I studied in college, I decided to get a job as a bartender. I thought it would be a good way to meet some new people in the city, and uh, working in the nights would give me more time to explore in the day. So that's what I did. When I first got to the city, I didn't know a lot of people, so I started to experiment with a few new hobbies as I was out there. I would go for runs around the beautiful seawall of Vancouver. Those runs would quickly turn into walks because running is exhausting. <laughs> I attempted a yoga class where I yoga'd so hard that I accidentally let out a little bit of gas and terrified the woman downward dogging beside me. 
But after testing out hobby after hobby, I finally found one that stuck. It was hiking. I started to spend time in the mountains, and to my surprise, my extroverted, attention-craving soul started to enjoy the solitude out there. The smells, the sounds, the views. You guys, those views. Mm. It was because of those views that I decided to rediscover an old hobby, which was photography. As far back as I can remember, I've always enjoyed photography, but it wasn't until I started climbing mountains every day that I began taking photos on a regular basis. I come back from each new hike with a new photo to show off, and as time passed, those photos started getting better and better. After a while, my hikes, they turned into full-blown photography missions. I was climbing mountains to take photographs. I'm not sure the exact day or the exact location, but sometime during the summer of 2014, somewhere between the Pacific Ocean and a mountaintop, I found my passion. It was photography, just so we're all on the same page. <laughs> I spent two years working as a bartender, climbing mountains and brushing my teeth with a manual toothbrush in Vancouver. And when I decided to move home in 2016, move back to Saskatchewan, I had a clear goal in mind. I wanted a career in photography. So I came back to Saskatchewan, I took a look at my options, and I decided I was going to apply for this position as Saskatchewan's official travel blogger, known as the Saskatchewander. The Saskatchewander is a position where one lucky person gets paid a full-time wage to travel the province, take photos, shoot videos, and write posts about things, document their adventure on social media. If I got that job, rock and roll. I was a ready-made photographer. If I didn't, we were going to cross that bridge when we got there. I'm not good with plan Bs, if you guys can remember. <laughs> In 2017, my Saskatchewan dream became a reality as I was thrown headfirst into the most adventurous year of my life. In 12 months, my manual toothbrush and I put on over 46,000 kilometers, spent 222 days on the road, all the while attempting to entertain a social media audience of over 70,000 people. It was a wild ride, and I met so many incredible and inspiring people along the way, but I must admit, at the end of my term, I was ready to slow down. Between life in Vancouver, time spent traveling, and the Saskatchewan job, I had forgotten how to sit still. For the last four years, I'd been flying by the seat of my pants, practically living out of a suitcase, which is exactly what I wanted. But after having that for some time, something had changed. I missed my electric toothbrush. Exa almost exactly a year ago today, I accepted a role with Tourism Saskatchewan as their content creation specialist. I'm basically their in-house photographer. It's an unnecessarily weird title. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, the job is permanent. It's a Monday to Friday, it's based here in Regina, my hours are 8 to 5, and I even have my very own cubicle. I leased an apartment, I bought a couch and a bed for the first time in my life, and while unpacking my things a year ago, I grabbed a box, I blew the dust off, I opened it up, I walked to the bathroom, I untangled a cord, and I plugged in my Oral-B Pro 1000. I began living the safe, stable life that I was finally ready for. But the brain... The brain is a funny thing, you guys. Less than two months into that job, I started to daydream about the life that I had before. Less than two months. I missed the road. I missed hotel beds. I missed lukewarm gas station coffee. That's weird. <laughs> <laughs> there was this particular stint of time where I ended up spending a month straight, four weeks, sleeping in the same, ev same bed every night. That's probably normal for a lot of people here, but for me, before that particular stint of time, seven days was the longest I had went in almost two years. During that stretch of time, I started to feel down. I got sad. I was seeing the cup half empty. I developed this negative mindset. I was complaining a lot. I just wasn't happy, and I had no reason not to be. So I decided to take a trip. It wasn't anything big or adventurous. I just decided to go to my hometown, two hours south of Regina, and just get away for the weekend to clear my mind. I got to Cornac on Saturday morning. I had a great day visiting with family, which led to a great evening visiting with friends. I probably got home around 1 in the morning and uh, where I was staying at my cousin's house. But before going to bed, I opened up my duffel bag, I grabbed my shower kit, and I made my way to the washroom. Without thinking much about the fact that I hadn't used my manual toothbrush in so long, 
I pulled it out of its busted up old case. I spread on a little, a little Sensodyne fresh mint and I stared myself down in the mirror as I raised my hands to give my jibs a good scrubbing. And then, and then it happened. The moment that those bristles hit my teeth, every memory from the last four years of adventure came rushing back to me. The view from mountaintops in Vancouver, sand between my toes in Ecuador, paddleboarding the South Saskatchewan River, flying in a jet. These moments flashed through my mind like a scene from a movie. I was overwhelmed, overwhelmed with a joy that I hadn't felt in months. It was in that moment, standing there with a toothbrush hanging out of my mouth, toothpaste drooling out of the edge of my smile, where I had an idea. I finished brushing my teeth, I ran to the other room, I grabbed my phone, and I punched in a memo. I wrote down, find happiness with a toothbrush. The next day, I made my way back to Regina, and as I readied myself for bed in preparation for another week of nine to fiving, I reached for my Oral-B Pro 1000, and I knew exactly what to do. For the next two minutes, while those bristles oscillated, rotated, and pulsated along my gum line, I was going to think about all the amazing moments and memories that I had in my life thanks to safety, thanks to stability, and thanks to living in one location. As I brushed my teeth, I thought about my family. I thought about my friends. I thought about how living in Regina, I was able to spend almost twice as much time with them than I could when I was on the road or out in Vancouver. I thought about my health and how nice it was to just go for a run after work at the same time every day. I thought about all the nicely folded clothes in my closet. Everything wasn't wrinkled up in a duffel bag anymore. I thought about breakfast. I had a kitchen, a frying pan, and a stove. I could scramble an egg in the morning. You can't do that in a standard hotel room. I thought about the good things, and there were so many of them. We all have so many of them. No matter where we are in our lives, what we're doing, what we want to be doing, we all have so many things in our life to be grateful for. Everyone in this room has an endless list. It's just a matter of reminding ourselves every day about them. The next time you guys brush your teeth, I want you to use that time. I don't care what toothbrush you use. I don't care how long you brush your teeth for. The next time you guys brush your teeth, I want you to use that time to think about what it is that you're grateful for. Build this habit with your toothbrush. Do this every single day, both morning and night, and at lunchtime if you're a noon hour brusher. Do this every day and watch. Watch what it does to your mind. When I look at either one of my toothbrushes, it brings me back memories of adventure from the past, it fills me with excitement for the future, and it grounds me with gratitude for the present moment. And I want your toothbrush to do the same for you. My name is Andrew Hiltz, thank you for listening, and do not forget to floss.